Welcome back to the School of Car Sex. I'm Jacko and I'm here with Coach Jude, our resident yoga expert, as well as car sex coach here at the School of Car Sex. And just gonna take me and you through a little yoga flow that is gonna be designed to help you with your calisthenics movement aspect of our framework. Yeah, so it's a short um, flow today. Hopefully you'll be able to follow along um, about 15 minutes or so. Um, so get yourself a mat and enjoy. So today we're gonna to start in child's pose. So um, on the floor, Jacko, toes together. And you can either have the knees apart or together. It's totally up to you what feels more comfortable. And we're gonna reach forwards with the hands, extended child's pose, sinking the chest down towards the floor. And if it's comfortable for you, getting the forehead all the way down onto the mat. So having a big stretch from the tailbone all the way to those fingertips. Now again, start your practice. You can stay here for as long as you want to until you feel ready to move. We're gonna get going straight away. So we're just gonna come up onto the fingertips. So make a little tent with your fingers. Lift up the elbows and you should feel a deeper stretch through your shoulders. Can you feel that? Yeah, yeah. Get that. And we're just gonna walk the hands over to the right side of the mat. So try and keep your hips still. We're gonna take the hands as far as we can. So we just begin to stretch through the side body into those lats, maybe bringing the left hand on top of the right just to make it feel a little bit stronger if you want to. And then coming back to centre and walking all the way over to the left side. Good. Back into the centre of the mat and just coming up onto all fours. So if your knees were wide like mine, I'm just going to step them a little bit closer together so the knees are directly underneath the hips and I'm going to make sure that my wrists are underneath my shoulders. So shoulders, elbows, wrists, so in a nice long line. Fingers are spread nice and wide and we're going to be nice and active through the arms. So sometimes when we come into this, what we call tabletop position, you can kind of slump down into the shoulders but we're going to push the mat away with the hands, make sure that we're nice and active through the arms. Draw the belly in towards the spine, try and create this nice flat back. From here, we're just gonna use our breathing, our breath to wake the spine up a little bit. So as you take a breath in, I want you to drop your belly down towards the floor, lift up your tailbone, and see if you can drag the chest in between the biceps. You can even roll your eyes up towards the sky. So this is cat pose, good. And then as we breathe out, we're gonna tuck the tailbone under, tuck the chin to the chest, and really arch through the back of the body. So just moving between cat and cow. Nice simple movement but it feels really good for your spine and you might find that one of these maybe when you sink into cow or maybe when you stretch through into cat it just feels really nice and you want to stay there for a little while so if you do just stay there or you might find that you get um, an urge to kind of swing the hips from side to side so what we call wagging the tail so if you do that perhaps just bring the right shoulder a little bit closer to the right hip and the left shoulder a little bit closer to the left hip a little bit of lateral movement. And then, we, and, then, yeah, and then we're coming back into that tabletop position again. So we're going to thread the needle to get a bit of rotation through the T-spine. So let's take the right fingers all the way up to the sky. And then we're going to thread that right hand underneath the body, bring the right shoulder right into the centre of the mat, drop it down onto the floor if we can, and drop that right ear down next to it. Nice. So your bum stayed on top of your knees, yeah, perfect. And you're just gonna press ever so lightly into that left hand to try and get a little bit more rotation through that spine. Can you feel it? Yeah, feel I good? feel good. Yeah. Feels tight. Good. And then come back through centre, come back into that tabletop position. And we'll try the other side. So big breath in, left fingers to the sky. And then let's thread it through that space again. Left shoulder, left ear down to the floor. Push into that right hand, see if you can get a little bit more rotation through the spine. And then coming back to centre. So hips are back on top of those um, knees. We're, all we're going to do is walk the hands forward into what we call puppy pose. So letting the chest sink down towards the floor. It's a good stretch for the shoulders. If your shoulders are really tight, then taking the hands a little bit wider is going to make it easier for you. If your shoulders feel okay, what you can do is lift the chin and look forwards. So there's variations here that you can use depending upon um, the mobility of your shoulders anyway. Nice, Jacko. And let's walk back up to centre. 
you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's nice, extension it? and getting over it. So tuck the toes, we're going to move the seat towards the heels and lift those hips nice and high into downward facing dog. Inverted V shape, so have a little paddle of the heels, it just feels nice for the hamstrings and for the calves. When we come into our final down dog, it's perfectly all right to keep the knees bent. We want the hips, the bum to go as high as we can and to feel a nice long line from the fingertips to that tailbone. That's it. Good. So if your hamstrings are tight, keep a soft bend in the knees and find this nice inverted V shape that Jacko's shown us here. Is that good? Yeah, it's really good. Oh, nice. So from here, we're going to do a little bit of work for the core. So let's take the right heel up to the sky. We're going to put a bend in that right knee. Come high on your left toes and then squeeze the knee to the nose as we bring the shoulders back over the wrists. Good. Lift and lengthen that right leg and we're going to squeeze that knee down to your right elbow. Keep your foot nice and high if you can. Yeah. Lift and lengthen. And then let's take it under the body to that left elbow. That's it. Lift and lengthen again. This time we're going to take that right leg all the way underneath us, rest it on the side of the mat, that's it, and let's push the mat away with that right hand and reach the left fingers up to the sky. Nice, so we're starting to build a little bit of shoulder strength here as well. Yeah, can feel that. Shaking. Let's bring the hands down, step back into your down dog. Good, have a little rest there, have a breather. Sink into child's pose if you want to, before we do that left side. So when you're ready, coming back into your down dog, let's take those left toes up to the sky. That's it. Bend in that left knee, squeeze that knee to the nose, we're going to bring the shoulders back over the wrists. Nice. And then lift and lengthen that left leg. Squeezing it down to the left elbow, keep that foot nice and high. Lift and lengthen. And then let's take it to the right side. lift and lengthen once more and then we're going to pass that left leg all the way underneath us keep that left hand nice and strong reach the right fingers up to the sky so one thing to think about here is being active through the shoulder not yeah. letting that shoulder collapse to the ear and then we're going to bring the hands down to the mat and step it back into your down dog and have a big long breath there good so take a look at the space between your hands, we're going to step the right foot forwards. So scooping it forwards, if it takes a couple of steps, that's fine. We're going to bring that left knee down onto the mat. So you might want to adjust the position when you're in this lunge. So right ankle underneath the knee and left toes, flatten your left foot into the mat and just shuffle those toes backwards so we begin to feel this left hip flexor opening a little bit. So you should feel something already. When we take a breath in, we're going to make that stretch a little bit deeper. So keep your weight in your right heel yeah. and let's take the fingers up to the sky. Nice. So, a couple of things to think about in this low crescent lunge. First thing is to not let these ribs flare too much. We want to keep the tailbone pointing down towards the floor. Shoulders nice and relaxed. So if your shoulders have shrugged up to your ears, just draw the shoulder blades down the back. Nice. And if you've started to let the weight drift onto your left knee, which happens, ease back into that right heel. Right hand is coming onto the hip. Left fingers are going to reach high. And then we're going to take a bend over towards the right. Oh, there yeah, it's we go. going to challenge the balance a little bit as well. Can you feel that stretch even more yeah. now? Then the left hand comes down onto the mat. We're going to roll the belly to the right side and reach those right fingers up to the sky. Let's tuck that left, those left toes and pick up the left knee. So again, we're working these shoulders a little bit here. Make sure you haven't collapsed into that left shoulder. Keep pushing the mat away with the left hand and look up towards that right thumb. Let's bring the hands down. We're stepping it back to down dog. And we're gonna do the other side. So look at the space between the hands, big step forward with that left foot and then drop that right knee down into the floor. So adjust again if you need to, you look pretty good. Mm -hmm. On your in-breath, let's take those fingers up to the sky. So keeping those ribs knitted down, keeping the weight in that left heel, shoulders nice and relaxed. Take a look at the space between the hands. 
And we're going to bring the left hand to the hip and have a little bend over to the left. And then plant that right hand down onto the mat. Roll the belly to that left leg and reach those left fingers up to the sky. Tuck your right toes, let's lift up that right knee. So nice and active through that right arm. If you've slumped into the shoulder, keep pushing the mat away. Nice, Jacko. And then bring the hands down to the mat. And let's step it back into your down dog. Take a look at the space between the hands. Big step forward with the right foot. This time we're gonna float up into our high lunge. So a little bit of work for the shoulders in this high lunge. We're gonna interlace the fingers at the tailbone. I'm gonna turn around, you stay where you are, Jacko. And we're gonna try and work the heels of the hands together. So if your hands are loose, then it's a little easier on the shoulders. So we're gonna try and work the heels of the hands together and really squeeze those shoulder blades together and open up the chest. Then from here, we're just gonna bring the right shoulder down towards that right knee. So lifting the um, thumbs away from the tailbone as much as you can. Good. And then coming back up to centre, reach those fingers high. And then let's plant the hands and step back to down dog. We're going to do a little movement here, a little flow before we do the other side. So on your in breath, let's float into a plank position. Easy option to begin with, we're going to drop the knees to the mat. I want your elbows to graze your ribs as you lower the chest in between the hands. So your bum should stay high, then we're going to slide the belly onto the mat. Extend the crown of the head away from the tail, a little back bend. Before sending the seat back to the feet, tucking those toes and lifting those hips into your down dog. Ready for the left side? Yeah. So take a look at the space between the hands. Big step forward with that left foot. Yeah. And then floating up into that high lunge. Shoulders relaxed. Let's interlace the fingers. Work the heels of the hands together. Draw those shoulder blades together. Open up the chest. And then let's take a little bow. El um, shoulder down towards that knee. Big breath in, reaching high. And then plant the hands, we're gonna step back to down dog. This time, slightly harder version for that vinyasa. So let's float into a plank position. This time, just roll forward on your toes for me so the shoulders are ahead of your wrists. Squeeze your bum cheeks. We're gonna hover down to elbow height. Low plank. Push into those hands just to the tops of the feet on the mat. Shoulders away from the ears, up dog. And then lift those hips into your down dog. Nice. So take a look at the space again, and we're gonna to tiptoe the feet into the space between the hands. So take it slowly, bend the knees, give the hamstrings a bit of a chance to stretch. And when you get there, just let the crown of the head go. So let the body fold over the legs. It can be nice just to cradle the elbows and have a little rock from side to side. Feel that in your back and your hamstrings. Yeah, and the ears. Little bend in the knees, we're gonna plant the hands and let's hop the feet back into a plank position. Nice. Drop those knees. Send the seat back to those heels. Sinking back into extended child's pose for a moment and then sliding forwards onto the belly. So, we're just gonna do a little bit of back bending just to strengthen um, the lower back. So to begin with, we're gonna um, take what we call a diagonal locust pose. So, Superman arms, right. legs are nice and relaxed, so about a hip mat distance apart, we don't need the um, legs pushed together. Foreheads are gonna stay on the mat, and what I want you to think about is lengthening your right fingers forwards and your left toes away from you. Push the pelvis into the floor, that's it, and then we're going to lift opposite arm and leg. Then come back down to centre and try the other side. Back down to centre. Right arm, left leg. 
back down, left arm, left leg. Nice. Now keep the legs where they are, but let's interlace those fingers at the tailbone again. It's a massive... A huge slug. <laughs> Look at that thing. We've got creatures in our practice. That's, so, that is nature. <laughs> interlace the fingers. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna, you're gonna try and push your knuckles towards your heels. So both legs this time. So as you take a breath in, push the pelvis into the floor, lift the legs, and let's squeeze those knuckles down towards the heels. Nicely done. Two more breaths. And then let it go. Hands underneath the shoulders. And we're gonna push back into that final child's pose. So, seat all the way down to the heels. Forehead on the floor if it reaches. You might wanna swing the arms around to the ankles this time, palms up towards the sky. It's a little bit kinder for the shoulders. And you can stay there until you feel ready to move. So there we go, uh, another yoga flow for you and for us. I certainly feel better straight away just from literally doing that. Some of that work through the spine particularly, the effect that that has on your, on your shoulder mobility and then how that is going to impact on things that you're working on in casting, it's like handstands and muscle ups um, and human flags yeah. is fantastic. So I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Let us know in the comments uh, how you found it and also if you'd like to see more uh, follow along type videos like this, whether you want to see more yoga stuff as well and we will, uh, we will do our best to put more out there for you guys. So remember, um, take your time, uh, listen to your body. If anything feels uncomfortable, then uh, you know that you've gone a little bit too far. So make sure you enjoy it and that it feels good. And um, this will definitely help you with your calisthenics. Until yep. next time. Class dismissed.